Instant AP VPN. In this module, we'll look at the various IAP VPN deployment we can use. We'll look at the various VPN tunneling protocols we can use. We'll look at the controller VPN configuration for IAPs. We'll also look at the IAP VPN configuration on the IAPs. And then we'll look at some troubleshooting we can do to see when VPN is not working. IPs have their own virtual controller architecture. Therefore, they do not need a controller for monitoring or configuration. The virtual controller will handle these processes. The IP cluster may be a total enclosed network or a branch office that needs access to the corporate network. A controller is required for terminating VPN tunnels from the IAP network at a branch location to the corporate network. The Aruba controller acts as a VPN concentrator and not as a controller for the IAPs. The controller may be a dedicated as a VPN server or can be a controller in service with APs. With some VPN protocols, some VPN vendor neutral servers can be used. You can also set up site survivability with a 3G, 4G USB stick when the wireless LAN link fails. The VC creates a VPN connection for the cluster. This is a good solution for enterprises with several branch offices and no dedicated line back to corporate. It can also be used for individuals working from home connecting to the VPN. The Aruba IPsec Tunnel an Aruba IPsec tunnel is configured to ensure that the data flow between the network is encrypted. When configured, the IPsec tunnel to the controller secures corporate data. The function of the Aruba IPsec tunnel, this configuration is only supported with an Aruba controller, is configured with a whitelist and VPN pool on the controller, supports all modes operating including L2, L3 and local, both AP and client traffic is encrypted and can traverse NAT boundaries with UDP 4500. Aruba GRE Aruba GRE does not require any configuration on the Aruba Mobility Controller. This is because it will act as a GRE endpoint. The function of the Aruba GRE include it is only supported with an Aruba Controller IPs will set up an IPsec tunnel to program the controller with a data path which in turn will set up the GRE tunnel. No manual GRE configuration is needed on the controller. The IPs have a peer GRE tunnel used to transport client traffic. Only L2 modes of operations are supported. GRE failover is supported and it cannot traverse a NAT boundary. A manual GRE requires GRE tunnels to be explicitly configured on the GRE endpoint. It can be an Aruba Mobility Controller or any device that supports GRE termination. L2TP Layer 2 Tunnel Protocol allows an IAP to act as an L2TP access concentrator and tunnel all wireless client with L2 traffic from the AP to an L2TP network server. Here's an overview of the steps for configuring an Aruba Mobility Controller and the IEP for IEP VPN configuration. On the Mobility Controller, you must define a VPN pool. You must also define a whitelist to verify that the IEPs are in fact authorized IEPs. And you must enable the VPN Tunnel Trust if your IEPs are not managed by Airwave or Central. On the IPs, you need to configure the controller's IP address. You need to add in the routing policies. And then you need to set up DHCP, either in local mode, centralized L2 mode, distributed L2 mode, or distributed L3 mode. We will use this configuration scenario over the next few slides as the basis for reviewing the steps for the VPN configuration.
The IP cluster is behind a modem and is in the 192.168.1 subnet. The modem has the 192.168.1.1 IP address and on the internet side it has a 6776.10.2 public IP address. The controller is in the DMZ and on the public side has a 4733.10.16 IP address. The corporate network is in the 10.110 and 10.120 subnets and the controller has a 10.1.10100 IP address. In the controller's VPN configuration you need to set up the VPN address pool. When using local DHCP Client traffic destined to the corporate is source NAT using the IEP's VPN tunnel IP. In this case, it is essential that the tunnel IP is routable. Reverse traffic from the destination can only reach the originator via the tunnel IP. Therefore, in deployments as a local DHCP, it is important that the VPN pool is routable in the controller. You must allow the IPs to be accepted by the controller. You can do this by using the whitelist DB command as shown in the slide. You only need to add in the VC's MAC address, but it would be prudent to add in all the IP's MAC addresses since you never know which IP will be the VC at any given time. Also, if you are using Aruba GRE from every IP, then you must add in all of the IP's MAC addresses. The release of controller 6.4 and IPs 4.0 requires that an IP be managed by an Airwave or Aruba Central in order to form a VPN tunnel to the controller. They will no longer be able to complete this step if they are locally managed. This change was done due to security reasons. If a client has an older version of an IP VPN deployment or locally managed IPs, and must form VPN tunnels to a controller at version 6.4, then they will need a specific configuration in order to bypass this check. To allow single branch or all branches to create VPN tunnels, use the following commands. IEP, trust branch DB, add MAC address, or allow all. In order to configure the IP tunneling and routing policy, you need to click on the More selection and choose VPN. From there, you can select the Tunneling tab and configure the following options. Protocol, Aruba IPsect, and Aruba GRE are options that must terminate on a controller. L2TP and Manual GRE can terminate on a controller or a service provider's VPN server. Primary host, this will be the controller's public IP address. In the routing tab, you add in the corporate IP networks. The gateway will be the controller's public IP address. This tells the IP that it must send traffic to these subnets via the VPN tunnel. The first issue we're going to look at is related to the VPN connectivity. This is one of the most common issues where you won't be able to establish a VPN tunnel to the controller. First, we need to understand how the VPN tunnel works. In an IP, once you've configured VPN settings, the IP will form a VPN tunnel to the primary host. When the IP tries to establish a tunnel to the controller side, the controller performs a set of checks. First, it sees whether the IP is authenticated. If the IP is authenticated, then it establishes the tunnel with the IP and assigns an inner IP. Once this happens, the tunnel will be up and running. To establish the tunnel, the IP needs to be able to talk to the controller through port 4500. The public IP of the controller should be accessible by the IP. If there is no IP connectivity to the primary host IP, or if the port 4500 is blocked, then the tunnel won't be established. In this slide we've listed some of the common mistakes that can cause VPN connectivity issues as well as some useful troubleshooting commands to resolve these issues. 
Some issues you may see include IPs not in the whitelist or not trusted, a gateway firewall blocking UDP 4500 and therefore blocking the IP's VPN, ISP or DMZ issues where the IP cannot reach the public IP address for the controller, misconfiguration of the IP address in the VC IP, VPN pool is exhausted. There are commands on the controller and other commands that you can use on the IPs to troubleshoot these problems. You can use the following steps in order to check the IP VPN status. From the support window, issue the command AP VPN status. Here you can see the status of the VPN connection with the controller. Cryptotype is a certificate the VPN uses to whitelist for authorization. Peer address is the controller's public IP address. Peer tunnel IP is the controller's IP address. AP tunnel IP is the VPN's IP address from the controller's VPN pool address. Current AM status is up. Tunnel status is up as well. You can also input the command show VPN status in the IP CLI which will display the similar results. In order to view the IP VPN retry counts, select the command AP IPN VPN retry counters. Here you can see the IP address as well as the total retry count. The AP log wrapper command will give you a list of any errors in the VPN setup. In this slide, we can see that the VCIP is attempting to communicate with the controller but is unsuccessful in reaching the controller and times out. The reason this IEP cluster is failing is because of the IP address of the controller. It's incorrect. The public IP address of the controller is 47331016 and not dot seventeen. In VPN, the ESA KMP defines procedures and packet formats to establish, negotiate, modify, and delete security associations, SAs. SAs contain all the information required for execution of various network security services, such as the IP layer services, header authentication and payload encapsulation, transport or application layer services or self-protection of negotiated traffic. On the controller, you can issue show crypto IPsec commands and see the VPN setup. Note that the 6776.10.2 is the IP address of the IP modem. The IP address 47331016 is the public address of the controller. The 172.16.55.9 is the VPN inner IP address originating from the VPN pool on the controller. These two commands show a successful setup of the VPN. In this module we saw the IAP VPN deployment for branch offices and home setups. We saw the VPN tunneling protocols, Aruba IPsec, Aruba GRE, manual GRE, and L2TP. We saw the controller IP VPN configuration when using Aruba IPsec or Aruba GRE. We also saw the IP VPN configuration and we looked at some troubleshooting commands.
Thank you.